In a new Sunday op-ed for the New York Times, Senator Mitt Romney calls on the U.S. to get serious about nuclear war with Russia, not by reducing tensions in the region or halting the flow of NATO weapons to Ukraine, but by engaging Russia militarily. Among options Senator Romney considers after a hypothetical nuclear strike are retaliation with more nuclear bombs, uh, quote, obliterating Russian forces in Ukraine with direct NATO intervention and emulating George W. Bush's 9-11 response by uh, forcing adversaries like China to pick sides. And what, and Robbie, what, one thing that's funny about this to me is the U.S. Uh, the U.S. warning that somebody else might use a nuclear weapon is, forgets the reality that we're the only ones that have ever used a nuclear weapon. That's right. That's true. That's that control <laughs> truth. We have done that. Um, it, it's also a little, we're concerned that they're going to use nuclear weapons, but given what we, what Senator Romney says in this op-ed, shouldn't Russia be concerned that we're going to use nuclear <laughs> Like We're concerned there, and so we're just openly discussing exactly how we might use them defensively, but they're saying yeah, the and same thing. Right, and it is... I mean, look, we, uh, look. Should, we should threaten to yes. retaliate with nuclear weapons if they're going to use nuclear weapons like that. This is the deterrent. If you use nuclear weapons, we will bomb you with nuclear weapons. That is, that is what prevents anyone from using nuclear weapons. It should hold. We have seen what happens when only one country has nuclear weapons. We use them like, <laughs> right. within Right, we use months. them with impunity, yeah. 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 Uh, and I think he's also right that it is good to be talking about this. Like, I think it's, we've been a bit blasé about the risk of nuclear war. Uh, be, that it should be the first question that is asked about, I think, every decision that's made with regard to this conflict. Does this increase the likelihood of global annihilation? Like that, and that doesn't seem to me to be a controversial statement because, you know, the, the end of the world is, to me, more important than anything else. Like that seems just kind of basic common well, sense. It's, it's only been the case for the last... In all of human history, it has only been the case for the last 70 years that nation states at war with one, could be at war with one another or indirectly at war with one another and not be committing their entire, right. all of their weapons to the fight because that carries some risk of nuclear annihilation. That's only a scenario right. that's existed for 70 years when, you know, with France and England or Russia and Germany, Austria, you know, the great power struggles, Napoleonic struggles, you know, in, in Europe mm -hmm. in the, the 1700s, 1800s. And so on, and it, World War One. Like these were, they were committed to winning these conflicts. Right. They they weren't saying oh, like, oh, we're not going to use this. They didn't have a device. It was like, well, we can't use that. We're now in, we're in that we can't use that in in phase of warfare, right. uh, which it has to stay that way because right. there will be so much death. Right. So and, much death. Right. And the advances that we had in World War One, the chemical weapons, we yeah, you know, everybody. Right. And then they decided not to use using them. them. Like, well, that was awful. Yeah. Uh, World War II, the, the absolute firebombing of civilian centers, mm -hmm. civilian populations, whether it was you know, Tokyo, Germany, London, you know, just absolute you know, carnage. Right. Uh, Death from the skies. Yeah, and so we, we've, we've, the propensity is there, but now, right, the technology has, has caught up. So at least, at least it's being thought of. You know, there have been a number of um, analyses that have come out of, of Russia saying that, that Putin is not, th that that there are plenty of ways for Putin to get out of this, that it's not as, that the chance that he's going to use nuclear weapons is extremely low, uh, that, that he does not, no matter what happens in Ukraine, he doesn't feel cornered in the sense that he's going to, he's going to have to like end the world. Uh, and I hope that those are true. Uh, extremely low risk is still risk. Right. And it, you know, it's, it's good to keep it in mind at the same time without like making it more likely to happen by saber rattling. Right. The, the shorter this conflict is, the good less likely end, there's going to be. Good reason to end the conflict. So re in possible. addition to, it's All horrible for dying. Ukraine and yeah. people are dying, and it and it's horrible for the global economy. It's causing uh, people are starving to death. People are yeah. starving to death. Yeah. It's uh, gas price. I mean, it, it, people in America even are you know dealing with not starving to death, but higher prices. A lot of. Uh, increased economic insecurity, and it, it is being felt all over the globe, and it's a really bad thing we would like to bring to a swift end. So, but if our, if our thinking is that, well, we want the, re the Putin regime to suffer or perhaps collapse, so let's draw this out until that happens, which is something that could happen, yeah, could happen tomorrow, very unlikely. Right. Could happen 10 years from now, maybe more likely then, but we, 
we're going to deal with 10 years of misery and Ukrainian lives and suffering here and everywhere else. Right. And also people think of that outcome as an obviously good thing. But the same, pe same types of people would have said the same thing about Germany after World War I. Yeah, let's, let's drive these people. They, they started this war. Uh, this is their fault. They need, to, they need to pay back. They need to pay and they need to suffer. We're going to drive them into the ground for a couple of decades. Uh, and, and when their, and, re their regime collapses and is replaced by an even a, a right. worse regime, one of the worst regimes that has ever existed in all of human civilization. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. And, if, and there are very few people at the time, John Maynard Keynes famously uh, being the exception there with his economic consequences of the peace, saying, hey, actually, I'm not so sure that this is a good move that we're doing here. Everybody else was like, just, you know, he, humiliate it was, Germany. It was yeah. a pile on, he was mobbed. It was very, the same the same mentality of like, what do you support Germany? You know, being responsible for World War One. Like, are, are, were you a friend of the Kaiser? Like, what's, what's wrong with you? Like, you can't. No, nobody is allowed to make arguments without you know instantly getting thrown over the other side. So mm -hmm. anyway. Anyway. Well, meanwhile, in a video address given at Davos today, President Zelensky said the West should have supported Ukraine more in 2014 after Russia annexed Crimea. Quote, we are grateful for the support, but if that had happened back then immediately, that unity, that pressure on governments and on companies, would Russia have started this full-scale war? Would it have brought all these losses upon Ukraine and upon the world? I'm sure the answer is also no. I'm not so sure the answer is no. It could have just brought the war then <laughs> more. It might have. I wonder. Yeah. Now, it's it's interesting. The, the it's interestingly like the mil the Russian military may have even in, been in better shape then. In 2012, uh, Putin uh, fired this reformer and uh, who was trying to kind of modernize and get a lot of the corruption out of the. Uh, Russian military, military industrial complex, and replace them with a military industrial complex stooge, uh, whose you know whose corruption and alliances with these major companies is a significant reason that the war is going so badly for Russia. Like all of these different like one example, like they're they're like le they're they're like flagship tank uh, because of corruption and because there's no checks on what's going on. They they put like the ammunition like right underneath. Uh, the soldiers inside the tank with that with no armor between the ammunition and the soldiers, so you hit it with one of those javelins and it just it's finished. Like that, th those types of mistakes don't happen in a in an efficiently run mil uh, you know military industrial complex. In a corrupt one, those are the tanks you wind up getting. So uh, maybe they had a better military in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's no war. Maybe the, a lot of sanctions, but I do not see them. Um, I. I I don't see them. I don't see the Maidan happening with Yanukovych getting uh, getting thrown out, and then a pro-European uh, government put in, and then a massive number of sanctions over the Crimea annexation. I I don't necessarily see how that doesn't lead to more confrontation too. Like, yeah, I, it, it, the, like if he's trying, uh, yeah, I don't know. It would and it would have been back at a time. Uh, Twenty fourteen is. This is pre-Trump and the kind of switch. It would have been interesting politically, the, the sort of switch on Russia posturing between the Democrats, right. the, the, the overnight switch when Rachel Maddow declares that you know, Russia is, is evil and, and Republicans are evil, Republicans are Russia and Hillary, you know, all of that happening uh, subsequent to that. So it would have been, it, it just right. been a Because you still had John McCain and right. Lindsey Graham and those others at the, right. at the time would have been definitely called it braying. Right, De War. Democrats would have fought it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't know. But here that. we are. Here we are, and it is interesting. You know, all the uh, this has created more the, the countries that want to join NATO. Uh, Putin's actions have indirectly kind of triggered some kind of European solidarity. But but China's not China's not taking our side in this conflict. Right. The uh, the what well, the Saudis aren't doing anything useful for us. Um, yeah. It's, just, it, it's created more, the West is, I think, more united, but it's not, the whole world has not united against Russia. The West right. is united. Um, so, right. uh, meanwhile, President Biden confirmed today that the U.S. would invade militarily should China invade Taiwan. Well, not invade, but right. would engage militarily, yeah. According to AP, the president continued on to say that deterring China from attacking Taiwan was why Russian President Vladimir Putin must pay a dear price for Ukraine. 
which I, right, I get that. We want China to perceive that an engagement in Taiwan would be costly and would be not worth it. We do want them to have that sense. But I mean, what would we actually do in the event of that happening is, is not clear. Did you see this, uh, this Chuck Todd thing where he did like a war game of what would happen if uh, China he did it on his invades show. Taiwan? He, he did part of it on his show and then I guess the rest on wherever else his, his show lives or something. CNN Plus. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and it was, it, was, it's, it was scary. He's got the one team representing uh, China, another team representing uh, the U.S. and and you've got the Chinese in in this in this war game. You've got the Chinese bombing Guam, uh, bombing our, a base in Tokyo. Then you've got us like attacking their ships and their subs, and mm -hmm. uh, and you can see it spiraling out of control, ex extremely quickly. Mm. Um, and you know who who knows if China's looking at this. I we'll, I guess we'll find out and seeing like well you know what this doesn't seem to have been worth it for Putin. Or saying, you know what, hey, let's do it quickly now, get it over with. Yeah, hopefully the former. Hopefully yeah. the former. Because you, you do want countries to be deterred from invading other countries. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the point of... Including the United States. <laughs> right, us yes. too, right? And, right we say we, we are hypocrites because we are... And, and actually what we did in Iraq and Afghanistan emboldens... Uh, more malicious countries, or equally malicious, if you want to use a <laughs> lefty framing, uh, to do this kind of thing with impunity, because we did it as well. It doesn't matter if our intentions were The George good. W. Bush quote is like all anybody will ever need Oh, from we did history. talk about that last yeah. week. The, what was that? That a single... Uh, a single br d brutal dictator can, yeah, can launch in a brutal invasion of another country. Yeah, like Iraq. Iraq. Yeah. I, I mean, Ukraine. Ukraine, and, but Iraq too. All right, tomorrow on Rising, we're going to get more into the weeds of everything you need to know about monkeypox with Dr. Amesh Ajala. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Brianna will be back tomorrow, right? I believe so. No. I, we never know. I never know the schedule. I didn't know it was going to be you until you, you walked well, through walk the door this morning. Door. A pleasant surprise at that. Happy to be here. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.